On day one, I spawned in as a baby T-Rex. All around me was my lush dinosaur home, and everything was so peaceful and full of my people. Son, I'm so happy that you're finally here. Dad. But then a massive void rip ripped open in our home and stepping out of it was a void T-Rex. What's going on? I've been waiting for this moment for years. You traitors. With the strength of the void, my power will grow. He ran up and attacked a group of dinosaurs, corrupting them instantly into the void. The now avoided T-Rex did as he commanded and rushed towards my father. Dad, no! As I ran to help him, a shooting star fell from the sky directly on top of me. From its impact, the star's cosmic power infused within me, causing me to transform into a cosmic baby dinosaur. What just happened to me? I had a sense to look up, making me see five other shooting stars falling down to other parts of the world. The cosmic universe chose him? No! Impossible! A car rushed straight towards me, but my father ran up and slammed him back. Leave my son alone! Bozo, you must leave now! He cut off my father with an attack, corrupting him too. No! Dad! On day two, I was on the run from the horde of void dinosaurs, but felt so weird. I then found myself on the edge of a deep chasm. Whoa! There was nothing but darkness below, but far behind me came charging in my people. Oh no! Jump, little one! What? Who said that? Do it now! Oh gosh, okay, here we go! Ah! Ah! What? Under my feet was a cosmic platform. Did I make this? I started to jump across the chasm with my amazing new platform ability as the void dinos shot at me with void energy. Whoa! With one final jump, I made it to the other side. I then watched as a car approached the other edge. All of your stupid people are mine now. Ah, even your father. Why? Why are you doing this to us? You know nothing! Your people all deserve this. And with the void by my side, nothing will be left. Then, out of nowhere, a strange cosmic portal opened up behind me. Enter now. I can't just leave my father. But I was then pulled in by force. Ah! Where am I? The ancient corridor was filled with cosmic energy and floating at its center was a shadowy hooded figure. We have very little time, Fozo. It takes immense energy to hold us in this realm. I am the cosmic essence, pulled together by the universe itself. And it seems like the galaxy has chosen you. Me? Why? Just then, large amounts of cosmic and void energy started to spread throughout the room. The reason is still unclear, but you must know a war is brewing between these two forces, cosmic and void. A car is the world's largest concern. His rage with the void combined, it's unmatched. Okay, but why? Why is a car doing all of this? He's a dinosaur like me. The cosmic entity then fell to the ground as the cracks worsened. That is still unknown, but you are here to help stop him and maintain balance with the void. I looked back and the portal I came through started to flicker. We are out of time. Go and find the cosmic crystals. Ah! Ah! Suddenly, I was back in the overworld, but somewhere I didn't recognize. There was an orange glow far off in the distance, and it looked like it was out in a meteor 
crash site. I saw that there in the crater was an orange crystal. Wait, can that be a cosmic crystal? But then I noticed a group of void cavemen that were running straight towards it. Oh no, the void has spread to them? I have to get the crystal. I ran into the crash site as all the void cavemen started attacking the crystal. Hey, they all then turned their attention towards me. Um, this was a mistake. Destroy cosmic! Uh-oh! The caveman began chasing me around the crater, slashing void attacks straight at me. I gotta do something! Out of panic, I let out a large roar, sending the caveman back. I took off through the opening and jumped towards the crystal. And as I touched it, I felt its cosmic energy infuse within me. I gained five more hearts, became a larger dinosaur, and now I could unleash a cosmic roar. In one powerful attack, I took out a whole group of them. Whoa, I can get even stronger? I wonder why the galaxy chose me. Orange cosmic energy then started to flow throughout me, causing the crystal to shoot out? Wait, uh, get back here! I ran after it until it led me to another mountaintop. That was floating and spread around were five cosmic pillars. Whoa. On day five, I made it up the island while the orange crystal placed itself onto one of the pillars. It then became a floating planet. All right, so there's four more? Those must have been the stars I saw crashing down earlier. With that, I got to work building my very own dinosaur home. And done. Perfect. As soon as I finished, I saw a beam of cosmic energy shoot out from the center of my base. Good work on retrieving the first cosmic crystal. It wasn't easy. The void, it's starting to take over everything. I want to help take it down, but only if I can save my family while I do it. Fozo, that might not be a possibility. We have to find a way. Uh, what is that? I looked back over and saw a boar running through my base, destroying everything. What the? The boar then started to rush towards me. Ah! Bad, Roger, bad. <laughs> Sorry, it can get a little crazy sometimes. Even more since our home was taken. Did you say taken? By who? On day six, the goblin brought me all the way to his tribal home. But there was corruption everywhere. Just like my home, void goblins and more void T-Rexes were all lined up, looking out as a car called out. Years ago, my own dinosaur people turned their backs on me. But now, look at my power. Day by day, the void will spread. And I will make sure nothing is left. He let out a powerful roar, causing void energy to shoot out into the sky. The dinosaurs turned their backs on him? But why? I know you useless goblins hold a special rule in this village. One that can bring me straight to the purple cosmic crystal. Now, where is it? A crystal? We can't let him get that rune. Well, you're in luck. Good old Rook and Roger happen to know exactly where that is. Can you take me there? Yeah, I can help you, but you'll owe both of us. He led me to an ancient cave nearby, and it had a long tunnel leading to the rune. Rune's right here. But in order to get it, you must overcome the Cave of Trials. On day seven, I heard the void creatures getting close. I guess we don't have a choice. Here we go. I ran in with Rook right behind me. The first obstacle was a massive spiked pit. And I instinctively jumped and made a cosmic platform to us to spring across. Hey, that was easy. Watch out. Suddenly, falling from the ceiling was a giant boulder. Ah! We ran down the tunnel with the boulder getting closer and closer until we made it. I ran up and grabbed the room as the boulder shattered. Yes. Whew, thank 
goodness. Who knows what a Akai would have done if he got it. As he said this, I looked past him and saw the horde of void creatures barreling through the cave. No, we're trapped. Hold on. Rook then threw his weapon across the room and hit a hidden switch on the wall, causing the cave ceiling to open. Secret exit. Come on. I used my cosmic platform to jump up and leap into the vertical tunnel as the three of us escaped the void horde. Man, that was a close one. Yeah, no kidding. You really do have some special powers, don't you? Yeah, you're telling me. I then pulled the rune out, and because of this, a pathway of light became visible. This has to lead to another crystal. On day eight, I left Rook and Roger and followed the glowing path into a hilly tundra biome. And there was another meteor crash site. But no crystal? Why did it bring me here? Suddenly, time itself seemed to shift rapidly as the sun and moon above started to frantically change? Okay, what is going on? Oh, yeah! <laughs> The mad cackle was coming from a castle. I hurried over and entered, only to see a rabbit bouncing around the room. He was extremely fast and could also teleport around. Wait, is he using cosmic energy? Oh boy, did I find the jackpot. Some purple rock gave me powers unlike anything I've seen before. I'm on top of the world. Hey. Oh, are you shouting at me? I'll show you, you big nosed freak. The rabbit began to channel cosmic energy and attacked. No, wait. I had to dodge his crazy attacks as he was bouncing around everywhere. I said, stop. With one powerful cosmic roar, I pushed him back. Look, I need that crystal you're using. You mean this crystal? Nuh -uh -uh. The rabbit dropped a purple cosmic crystal down in front of him. Yeah, that's it. I ran up to grab it, but he took it back. Dude, if I don't get that crystal, the void is going to take over everything, including here. All right, then how about this? You may have it if you can beat me at my favorite game. On days 9 to 10, I went with the rabbit to the starting line of a tundra race course. All right, beat me in a foot race and the crystal is yours. Dude, you can't be serious. Three. Go on, go. He took off down the course, leaving me in the dust. Hey, the rabbit was very fast and bounced over some saplings. Take this. With his cosmic magic, he forced them to rapidly grow into full-on trees. What? He could control time? I used my strong jaws to bite through them, cutting them down, and did everything I could to try and catch up. But as I got close, he then used his power again to force a bridge to grow old and fall apart. I summoned a cosmic platform to leap across the broken bridge. You can't get rid of me that easily. Finally, we were near the finish line as a turtle started to cross the path. The rabbit shot out his energy, aging the turtle into a giant ancient one. But he began to freak out, spinning around in its shell. He then slammed into the rabbit, throwing him off the course. Now's my chance. Yes, I did it. No, impossible. Hey man, a deal's a deal. Give me the cosmic crystal. This is so stupid. Fine, take it. He threw over the crystal to me and I grabbed it, causing the cosmic energy to empower me. I gained five more hearts and could now summon cosmic shards from the sky. Awesome. On days 11 to 12, I made it safely back to base with Rook and Roger. Hey, Fozo, uh, thanks, you know, for letting us stay here. We really have nowhere else to go. Of course. I then took the time to build him up his very own goblin home with a pig pen for Roger, of course. I then saw that the cosmic crystal had found its place next to the one on the platform, causing a new purple planet to appear. Whoa, are each of the crystals from different planets? That must be why their powers are so different. As I was looking at the crystals, I heard an unfamiliar voice in the distance. What is that? I followed the noises outside of the base until I reached an odd graveyard. 
there laying in the dirt was a fossil T-Rex head? Please help! What the? You, you're alive? How? To be honest, man, I have no idea. But when I came to, I had all of the rest of my pots. Then a bunch of rascal plants came out and stole all of my bones. Wait, plants did this? Where? On days 13 to 14, I ran around the area searching for the fossil's bones when I came across a tiny plant with a bone in its mouth. Hey! Ah! I shot out my new cosmic shards attack, which spooked the plant so much that it dropped the bone. Okay, that fossil head said he lost five other pieces, but where? I kept searching around, finding another plant high up in a tree, and another one hiding in a pool of water. Give me that. Hey, get back here! I hurried after the fourth one as it ran into a clearing. Got it! Now... Just one more to go. But all around me suddenly appeared more and more of the little plants. Then out of nowhere was a much larger one. Why have you come here? You guys are the one who stole my friend. The large plant started to shoot out plant life at me. Ah, what the heck? Leave us at once. I just want somewhere for my children to be safe. What are you talking about? The mother plant stopped fighting and motioned me to a hill as we looked out into a jungle far beyond. But something was wrong. The jungle was made out of sand? That is not not natural. And in the center of it all was a familiar yellow glow. The next cosmic crystal. Our jungle home wasn't always like that. And now it's being ruled by a tyrant. It's all right. I will go and get your home back, but only if you give my T-Rex friend back his bones. On days 15 to 16, I headed into the sand jungle, walking past cacti and jungle trees. What's that? I crept closer to the noise and saw a group of lizards and cactus people were facing off over a pile of resources. This is our pile, and you know it! But we collected it! Both of the groups started to fight each other, but then a large crab appeared at the top of the pile. Silence! The claw is waiting these resources for his sandy empire, and he will not wait another second! King Claw? As I said this, the crab looked over and noticed me. Hey, you, funky looking dinosaur, you don't belong here. Uh oh! I tried to turn around and run, but more crabs came out of the sand right in front of me. I was surrounded. I'm here for the cosmic crystal, okay? I need it. He's my crystal, huh? This guy sounds crazy. Take him to the king. On days 17 to 18, I was escorted by the crabs out of the corrupting jungle and into the desert oasis. We continued into the courtyard of a sand castle and at its center was a crater with the yellow cosmic crystal. There it is. Isn't it magnificent? I looked up and jumping down from his castle was the largest crab I had ever seen. Look, I need that crystal. <laughs> no! This thing has completely changed my life. Once I was a small crab with nothing, totally defenseless. But after this crystal landed here on top of me, I found power and purpose to rule this sandy jungle as my own tropical kingdom. You don't understand, I... No, you don't understand. I will now show everyone what it's like to be small. I was frustrated by his words and let out a powerful roar. I'm not gonna ask again. I need that crystal. So you have chosen violence. Very well. On days 19 to 20, King Claw rushed in to fight. As we did, he would use his massive claws to back into me. With the crystal by his side, he was no joke. Now! Ah! 
Ah, stop. Just stop this. Our real enemy is the void. The only enemy here is you. He was about to slam down onto me with a final attack when suddenly a pulse of void light erupted from beyond the castle walls. It corrupted the terrain instantly and a void insect appeared. No, the void. It's here. The moth flew towards us and another void pulse corrupted part of the castle, killing some of the sand creatures. No! King Claw started to run toward the moth and so did I. In another powerful void pulse, the entire sand castle was corrupted and I was taken down to almost no heart. I feel so weak. No, my kingdom. With all the destruction going on, I passed out. On days 21 to 23, I awoke in a strange void forest. Ah, oh, my head, where am I? I tried to run, but as I stepped forward, I was frozen by some kind of void magic. Ah! I then heard a roar and turned to see that stomping towards me was a car. You let me go. So be it. The circle of void magic faded away around me. Ah! I was about to blast him with a roar, but he easily countered me. I am not afraid of you, or anything for that matter. Not anymore, especially now that we have the yellow crystal. Why? Why are you doing this? You're a dinosaur like me. You hurt our people, our family. Family? Those people are anything but that. Especially to me. When I was just an innocent child, I was the smallest around. Or some would say the weakest. All others didn't even see me. They would only laugh. Until one day, they left me behind. An outcast to your so-called family. I was filled with nothing but anger and hurt. Until one day, I heard it. A power like none other. Something that would make me be seen, make me stronger than everyone else. The Void. A car moved even closer, lording over me. I vowed from that day, everyone will see just how strong I am. Void energy started to rumble around us as his anger made the ground shake. I quickly blasted him in the eyes though. <laughs> I took this opportunity to sprint past him and run into the void forest. Moth, go and take down that peasant for good. On days 24 to 26, I was running through the void dimension, just trying to find a way out until I came across a horrifying fortress, one with a terrifying creature hovering over it. That's it. That's the void. Then I noticed a bright yellow glow coming from inside the cosmic crystal. It's in there. I rushed through the structure and finally made it in a chamber that held the crystal. I was about to grab it, but then one of the giant eyes appeared in the window and instantly the void moth was summoned in front of it. Not you again. We began to fight as the moth would attack with void energy, casting magic that would slow me down. I can't lose. I can't. I blasted the moth with my cosmic abilities and made a break for the yellow crystal. I grabbed it, causing its energy to infuse into me. I gained five more hearts and was now much stronger. Ah! I unleashed my new attack, a stream of cosmic asteroids towards the moth. And with that, I took him down. Yes. I then heard a car roar off in the distance. Oh no. He knows I got the crystal. I got to get out of here. The cosmic crystal suddenly rose up and started to fly around the room. In a huge blast, the crystal created a rift back to the overworld. That's my way out. Here goes nothing.
Ding! On days 27 to 29, I walked out of the closing portal, right? Into my base. Looking up just in time to see that the crystal found its place on its own cosmic pillar. Whoa, a yellow planet? How many planets are there? Hey, dude! I noticed that the fossil T-Rex had gotten all of his bones back. Hey! Yeah! Thanks to you, I sorted out my differences with those dumb plants. And they gave me back my body. Sweet. Well, let's get you a place to stay. I built him up, his very own Jurassic graveyard in our base. Then I heard the sound of a creature approaching my home. And as I went to confront them, I saw a tiny crab. Wait, King Claw, is that you? Yes, little the crystal. I have returned to my regular small body. Well, let me give you a new place to live. I took the time to build up the king, his very own sandcastle, and moat. There you go. There's one thing I must show you. Follow me. He then led me out of the base to an abandoned shrine I had never seen. When we fought one another, I thought I recognized your cosmic power, and then I remembered it was here. Maybe this is connected to my power somehow. I walked into the center of the shrine and began to focus on the cosmic energy I had absorbed so far. Because of this, something began to happen. On days 30 to 32, I was summoned to another cosmic shrine high up in space. There arriving just before me was the cosmic essence. Little one, you have to move faster. Hey, I'm trying. The entity with the wave of his hand teleported us to a desolate landscape. Look, I've seen this already. I know what the void can do. Just watch. I watched as a small fox wandered too close to the rift and was corrupted by it. You see, the void can be very tricky and deadly. It spreads to control its victims, but if they are corrupt for too long, the host dies. That's not good. Wait, is my family okay? The entity casted something towards me, causing me to see a vision of my people. Dad! They are fine for now, folks. They grow weaker by the day. My vision came back to me as I was back at the shrine with the entity. You can save them and release them from the void's grasp, but only if you find the cosmic sanctuary. If you are able to rally all your people together, the sanctuary will reveal itself to you. Well, how am I supposed to do that? But before I can get an answer, I was teleported away from the cosmic shrine and was hurling towards the ground. Ah! Ow! I looked around and saw that I was just outside the gates of an intimidating void encampment. This looks like the vision the entity showed me. My father must be here. I started to investigate inside, noticing that all around this place had a lot of flames. What the? I peeked past a destroyed wall and saw a courtyard with all of the void T-Rexes. Stay alert. Someone else is here. I gotta stay quiet. I continued through the encampment, trying to look for what to do. I'm supposed to rally them all in one place, but that feels about impossible right now. That was when I noticed a tall tower where I could stand above the courtyard. If I call out to them, then I can get them all to surround me. I have to get up there. But as I made my plan, one of the nearest walls burst down to reveal my void corrupted father. Dad! <laughs> I knew you would show your face here eventually. Please, Dad, listen to me. The Void, it, it's corrupting you. It. The Void has done nothing but empower us. It's shown us the truth. With Akar's rule, the world will know not to resist. No, wait! He slashed towards me ruthlessly with his Void-empowered abilities. I knew that I had no choice but to fight as our cosmic and Void attacks clash. My dad then struck me back with his attack, hurting me a lot. That tower, it's my only chance. Get back here! He tried to hurt me every chance he could, but I unleashed another attack as I summoned 
a cosmic wall to block him and jump using my platforms until I reached the top of the tower. I let out the loudest cosmic roar I could muster. All of the void dinosaurs looked up towards me as I caught all of their attention. Now what? I rushed out of the outpost as the horde of void dinosaurs followed behind me. And him! I was running completely blind. That was until an orb of pure cosmic energy formed in front of me. I guess I gotta go that way. On days 39 to 41, I followed after the orb for what felt like forever until it led me to a hidden mountainside where it flew out and revealed the cosmic sanctuary. Whoa. The horde of void dinos and my father were not letting up though as they continued to attack. I tried to dodge as I got closer and closer to the sanctuary doors, but there were just too many of them. Yeah, I was so low on hearts. I felt like I could barely move. Your fight against the car will be your end. You should have embraced the void not turned to this. This void, it's going to destroy everything, Dad. You, my son, are a disgrace. Finish him. They were about to attack, but I was so angered by his words that it built up until I let out a large radial blast. It knocked all of them back giving me an opening. Once inside the sanctuary, the room was full of energy and there was an active circle of cosmic magic at its center. On days 42 to 44, I ran in the magic circle. There you are, no more running. I stood and waited for them to get closer and closer. Come get me. They all leapt in to attack, but I dodged out of the way as they moved into the magic circle and something began to happen. Cosmic magic began to move around the room as the energy built until they were all purified. It worked. You, you freed us, son. We didn't have control over any of our actions. I didn't even have my own thoughts. I... Dad, it's okay. I understand. I'm just happy you guys are okay. But then I heard a voice shouting from outside the building. What was that? that me and my father ran outside of the sanctuary to see a skeletal dragon was flying overhead it was breathing down cosmic flames and burning everything in sight hey that dragon i've seen it before it recently attacked the void outpost and it's made up of all cosmic energy that's why there were cosmic flames it must be connected to the next cosmic crystal <sighs> must burn the world to defend myself. Defend itself? Wait, is the dragon the green cosmic crystal? The dragon flew away, using its cosmic wings to propel itself into the sky. No, how are we supposed to find it now? On days 45 to 47, I brought my dinosaur family all the way back to our base. Wow, Fozo, you've done so much. I'm so proud. Thanks, Dad. From there, I gladly went on to build all of the dinosaurs their homes made specifically for them. They all seemed to be so happy to feel safe again. I wonder if I could bring them back from the void. Is there a way to do that to everyone else? First, I need to find that cosmic dragon. Did you say cosmic dragon? Uh, yeah. Oh boy, I love dragons. I know everything about them. They love high mountaintops, you know. And I know where the nearest one is. Cool, where? Where? Oh, come on, pal. Let me show ya. The two of us left and were traveling until we were stopped by a horrifying sight. The Void Fortress, it's now in the overworld and it was spreading the void everywhere. No, it's here now, the void. It's taking over everything. Spread and consume. On days 48 to 52, I started to run towards the Void Fortress. Fozo, wait. I didn't listen and knew I had to stop this. The otherworldly creature was shooting out condensed void beams that would corrupt the landscape 
in an instant. A car! Stop! There you are! He leapt down aggressively. I'm surprised you actually escaped the clutches of the void before. But never again! He unleashed a void roar towards me. But thankfully, I dodged out of the way. It doesn't have to be this way, a car. We can figure this out. Figure this out! I was seen as nothing! Look at you! The cosmic dinosaur! You're what? The destined one? Here to stop me? Well, I'm here to make sure that never happens! He unleashed another attack, but this time it hit! Ah! I was extremely low on hearts now. I, I can't die here. Out of nowhere, a green cosmic rift opened up between the two of us. The cosmic dragon, he has to be close. We need to go. I knew that the fossil T-Rex was right and started to leave. That's right. Run, Fozo, because the next time we meet, it will already be too late. On days 53 to 56, we arrived at the foot of Mount Verlick. Wait, this mountain? It's from another planet. I then heard the roar of the cosmic dragon and flashes of lightning. How are we supposed to get up there? I then looked down and saw a group of mountain people running towards us. Whoa, whoa! Our home! Our home has been taken, Cosmic Dinosaur! Thank goodness you're here! Look, I I'm here to help. Can you lead me to the peak? Right this way! We followed behind the mountain people as they took us up the trail and through their rocky home. But it was all burning with green cosmic fire. That dragon, we have to get him to stop this. They finally led us over to a tall wall in their village and began punching it. Guys, what are you? Suddenly, the wall opened only to reveal a path through and all the way up the mountain. Those who can prove their worth to Mount Furlick can see the peak for themselves. On days 57 to 59, the fossil T-Rex stayed behind with the mountain people. As I started to scale the path in front of me, the platforms were dangerously far apart. And in some of the gaps, Mount Verlick seemed to test me with barriers of rock. Ah! I had to wait and time my jumps perfectly to make it across until the final wall rose ahead of me. Out of my way! With a mighty cosmic roar, I broke through the final wall and made it successfully to the peak. We did it! I then looked around at my new surroundings and saw that the peak had been fully taken over by the green flames and the dragon made a den above me the storm raged on as the green cosmic dragon came into view stop this you are supposed to help us i need your power to stop the void he didn't listen though and started to rain fire down towards me i am lost what is my purpose? His flames started to scorch the ground below, blasting it out from under me. Ah! Ow! I was thrown inside of the dragon's den and now was face to face with it. On days 60 to 63, we began to battle as his flames clashed with my roar. He would fly around, constantly summoning minions to empower him. I shoved them back though with my cosmic abilities just in time to notice that the den was supported by three stone columns i ran over and took down the first one in a burst of cosmic energy don't destroy my home the dragon became much more aggressive now and so did his minions ah i ran over and just barely broke down the second column as i was hit by a ton of his minions no get back they were all sent flying so it was just me and the dragon but my heart i was low this is what you get for destroying my home what that is what you were doing to the mountain people I, what? in his hesitation i struck the last column bringing down the ceiling of the den on top of him 
purpose is not to defend myself? No, your purpose is to help defend the world. All of the worlds, especially from the void. Please join us. Then I yield, cosmic dinosaur. The dragon then transformed back into the green cosmic crystal. I grabbed it and its energy infused into me. I gained five more hearts. And because of my immense cosmic power, I could cause the earth to quake around me. I did it. Yes. On days 64 to 68, I made sure the mountain people could rebuild their homes before the fossil T-Rex and I left. We were able to make it back to base and watched as the green crystal had placed itself with the others and summoned a blue planet. Sweet! One crystal left. I looked around my home, seeing all of my new friends and family happy. And there, apparating next to me, was the cosmic essence. Now this is what it looks like to use cosmic power for good. Job well done, Pozo. Thank you. I just can't help but feel bad for a car, though. He was just never shown this kind of good. But I'm afraid that he's too far gone now. He and the Void need to be stopped at all costs. I then heard Rook shouting out into the base, chasing after Roger frantically. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Rook, what's going on? I don't really know. He's been acting weird lately. Weird? you say? Yeah, he only acts this way when, oh no, his kind must be in trouble. His kind? Where? Where are they? The nether. On day 69 to 73, Rook commanded Roger to dash forward as he created a nether portal in the base. Whoa! We all went through, appearing in the dimension. But as I looked around, everything was being corrupt. No, I knew the overworld was bad, but the nether too? Roger sniffed the air and suddenly jerked Rook down a passageway. Whoa, whoa! I ran around the corner with them to see a group of of nether boars slowly dying to void corruption. We have to do something. I ran to the nearest one and started to focus my cosmic energy, remembering how it purified my people. I cast my cosmic magic towards the hoglin, but it looked much weaker and it was no use. No, what's going on? Around the area, multiple void spores began to form. They're the reason the void is spreading here. I did everything I could. Even though my powers felt weakened, I was able to take out the void spores one by one until they were all destroyed. But the area still remained corrupted. The nether is supposed to be shut off to other dimensions. That's why your cosmic powers are weak. Why is the void so strong here? <coughs> yeah? Uh-huh. <coughs> oh, really? What is Roger saying? Apparently, all the creatures of the nether are looked over by their lord, but Roger's cousins say he's abandoned them, and they don't know why. What they do know is where his palace is. Really? All right. Who is this lord? They call him the Demon Lord. On days 74 to 77, Rook and I left in search of the Demon Lord when we finally saw his demonic palace. The only way in was across a long bridge spanning pools of void lava. I can't imagine this guy would be happy to have a simple chat, right? Yeah, you think? We began to march across the bridge when a flock of fire bats flew in our way. You are in the Demon Lord's territory. Turn back now! Sorry, but we can't do that. I have to talk to him. I was hoping you'd resist. Get them! All the bats started to swarm around us on the bridge. Their attacks would burn, and they were so annoying. Rook and I would fight them off as he swung his weapon around wildly, and I would use my weakened powers, but they weren't enough. This is for abandoned Roger's cousins! Ah! Rook ran to attack more bats, and so did I! I stepped forward and chomped down a group of the bats with my powerful bite, taking out the last of them. But I didn't realize one of them was able to get Rook! Rook! 
Luke! They were flying up and took him straight into the palace. On day 78 to 80, I wasted no time running straight into the palace after my friend. It didn't take long for me to reach the central audience chamber. And there, standing menacingly, was the demon lord. But he was purple, just like the void. Hey, give my friend back. <laughs> I heard that the cosmic dinosaur was running around in my domain. I just didn't think it was stupid enough to also make demands. You do know what I can do, right? I'm not afraid to take you down to save him. Oh, little dinosaur. I know far more than you think. With a snap of his fingers, the Demon Lord summoned not only Rook being held in a cage, but the final cosmic crystal. What? I've been around longer than any other being, T-Rex. I've lived since ancient times by always choosing the winning side. And right now, the Void is winning by far. So a car has entrusted me with this red cosmic crystal. Well, you're wrong. I can prove to you that you should choose the real winning side with us. Prove? You cannot prove anything. In an instant, the demon lord teleported me to a different area of his castle. I was now in his dungeon battleground, and he reappeared, but this time much larger in size. <laughs> You don't stand a chance. You will die here. On days 81 to 85, the enlarged Demon Lord and I began to fight. He would blast me with strange energy and cause his spinning daggers to attack on their own. I was doing the best I could to fight back, but my power was still not hitting hard enough. <laughs> So this is the power of Cosmic Pathetic. I was knocked down to really low hearts. Like I said, I always choose the winning side. He was about to strike me down with one final hit, but that's when I remembered my journey, my friends, all of the people that are counting on me. He knocked! With the most powerful cosmic roar I had ever released, I knocked him back across the room with the full force of my powers. What? That should be impossible. Just like I told you before, you are wrong. Another cosmic roar shrunk him down to the size he was before, and whatever weakening effect the nether had on me was gone. No, no. With one final blast, I was able to completely purify him. Yes! That means if I channel my powers enough, I can purify the void. We both were teleported back to the audience chamber with the red crystal, and Rook was released. On days 86 to 90, Rook came over to me as we looked towards the purified demon lord. Uh, I, I was wrong about you. T-Rex, about everything. I, I neglected my own world, even. But I won't anymore. You have shown me the true power of Cosmic. Please, take your reward. Gladly, I went up and touched the Cosmic Crystal, causing it to empower me. I gained 10 more hearts, and now became the most powerful dinosaur ever. Good luck now. Cosmic Dinosaur. As Rook and I left the Demon's Palace, I noticed that the Void Corruption faded from the Nether. Yes. Roger! Rook ran off as I quickly followed behind him. We were able to make our way back to Roger and the other boars. The Void, it's no longer corrupting them either. Thank goodness. <laughs> What is he saying? He said that he, I mean, we are very thankful, Bozo. Of course. Now let's get back home.
On days 91 to 94, we traveled back through Roger's portal, but all of it was destroyed. All of my friends and family were huddled around the cosmic pillars, the only place not touched by the void. Bozo! Dad! I started to run towards them, just as I saw the final cosmic crystal find its place on the last pillar. A red planet was summoned, and because of this, all of the pillars shot beams of cosmic light out into space. The cosmic essence then appeared, hovering above all of my people. Hurry, Fozo! Stand here! Everyone had cleared out from the center of my home as I ran over and stood in the pillars. Because of this, a beam of pure cosmic energy shot down onto me. The cosmic light empowered me, making me grow even stronger. I was now the strongest cosmic being. I looked around and the pulse of light purified my entire home to what it once was. But then then a horrible feeling washed over me as a car and an army of void goblins were just outside of our home. <laughs> I found you! Oh no! On days 95 to 99, a car and his army advanced into my base. I see you actually have your own little family again. Well, good thing I'm about to take it all away. All of the Void Army ran into attack. I didn't want to hurt them though, but there were so many of them. Everyone, round them up so Fozo can purify them. My father and I began to corner a group of the Void Army between the pillars in the base. Go on, get in there! As we put them all in the center of the pillars, the cosmic essence teleported the rest in a bright flash. No! Right! I focused all of my energy on another powerful cosmic roar, which purified all of the goblins at once. But a car. He escaped. Where is he? Don't let us slow you down, Fozo. Go and stop him. On day 100, I ran out and found a car at the foot of his void fortress. Give me more power. They have taken back my army. Stop this. You're far too late, Fozo. I'll show you. The void entity shot down a beam of pure void that struck a car, causing him to to grow even stronger. Time to end this! We began to fight as his void powers were stronger than anything I had faced before. I used all of the skill that I learned on my journey, but it didn't feel like it was enough. His void roar was too strong, making me extremely low on hearts. Akar, it doesn't have to be this way. You can stop this. To stop me, you're gonna have to kill me. Suddenly, a large flash of cosmic light burst out of nowhere, and the cosmic essence was floating in front of the giant void eye. In a single attack, the essence destroyed the void. What? No! I then used the opening to call down a massive cosmic star. It landed right on a car, defeating him. With him and the void gone, this world can finally be safe again.